I'm Sean Thornton, and you're watching Nasty Knuckles. You're listening to Nasty Knuckles, the Hockey Outlaws podcast, with your host, Terry Nasty Sotomayor and former Philadelphia Flyer Enforcer Riley Cote as they go behind the scenes with your favorite NHL players. Time to face off. All right, welcome back. What's happening, Nasty? What's up, Regarelia? What are you saying? Fresh off your gala with the... Philadelphia Warriors yeah. on the Battleship New Jersey. How was it? Oh, it was a pretty cool event. It looked yeah. great, man. Yeah, what I a, hate what it. What a cool it. venue, obviously. I mean, I, the first time I've ever been on the Battleship New Jersey, but what a great place to have first an event. First time? First time. <laughs> well, you don't hang out there? I've Not since breakfast, but <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, but it looked awesome, man. Yeah, yeah. it was cool. Yeah, I wish that yeah, All the boys there. are all fired up and in their uniforms. They look I pretty know, they, they look so good, man. Um, yeah, well done. The event was, uh, yeah, it was... Uh, it was certainly something that needs to happen annually. Yeah. I think they've all acknowledged that. So. I, I, if it happens again and I'm still kicking them there. I had to, I was in Johnstown, PA. Oh, God. Uh, what were you doing there? Rebels were there for the weekend. <laughs> Didn't have the best weekend. Let's not really talk about that. 0-2 on the weekend. Uh, How was the bus ride? The bus ride sucked. <laughs> they all suck. It sucks an hour away. How let alone that? four. Oh, four, Four yeah. and a half. Yeah, but, uh, you know, you throw a little... Uh, a little gummy in your mouth, and oh. you just kind of doze off. Yeah, just melt into the yeah. seat. And <laughs> Melting's a great word. Just ask my boy, Matty Gaudreau. <laughs> oh, sorry, Matty. Um, <laughs> a little heavy. <laughs> you were a little <laughs> heavy. <laughs> I had to peel him off Poor the seat. Poor little guy. He weighs a buck 30. I can, just I peel him, him off the seat. <laughs> Maddie, I'm not gonna throw you under the bus, but it was it was uh, Maddie, hey, a little heavy, a little well, heavy. We Riggs. all got to keep our sanity now. Yeah, we have to. Have to you know, coaches world. deserve that after a tough weekend. But um, anyway, that's why I didn't make it, and it sucked because I was uh, really disappointed, honestly. <clears throat> but I I'm glad it went well because I saw the pictures and videos, yeah. man, and talked to a few of the guys. So we missed you. Yeah, it, I, I wish I could have been there, man. Um, what else we got? Well, Flyers hockey. I'll tell you, well, before we get to Flyers hockey, I just got to throw a little shout out for Elvis and his team. They yeah. were 3 last weekend. Um, Any shout outs? Uh, no shutsies, but uh, his partner, Max, had two wins. LV played one game and got the win. Um, so it was it was fun. PHC 2014. All right. The boys are they're rolling. Um, so that was that was fun. Uh, but yeah, you're right. The Flyboys, since, since last week, uh, Tough, tough loss for San Jose. Yeah, obviously, but they they bounced back. Big win in Anaheim, um, and LA. Mm -hmm. Uh, But uh, Anaheim or Sam Merson, thirty five saves, played really well. Um, Your boy Sanheim had three points. He's playing twenty five minutes. Yeah, I know. He's 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 galloping out there. Stepped it up. Twenty five minutes a lot. You know he can handle it. He's in great shape. Yeah, exactly. He can skate himself out of trouble. Yeah. So, um, but that that was a big win for them in Anaheim. You know, but I think a bigger win in LA because LA's doing really well. Yeah, exactly. Um, And even going back to the San Jose game, I know, I know it's it's, it's, horseshit that they they lose to a team that doesn't have a win, but they outshot them like two to one. They did. You know, they actually played. Yeah. Pretty damn good. It's just like. One of those games, that, but you bounce back and you win t- two games on the road uh, on top of that. That, so. that was huge, especially after that loss. Rebound like, like that is is a good sign of character. So yeah, um, yeah, the boys seem like they're yeah they hummed along around. there out they're west. Pretty consistent. Uh, our boy Frosty got on the board. Two yeah. G's. Thank yeah. thank goodness, man. He he deserved it because he's been See playing well, and working hard. Yeah, I yeah. loved it. I love seeing him score and. Uh, Tip's getting it going. Oh, Tippy. Oh, he's getting it going. Player. He scored three Ooh. in two games. Yeah, and that play around for Toronto. Oh, man. Highlight reels. That was boys. highlight reel. That Sorry. Was, that was high end. But that was a nice play. Looks like play. something I've seen at Holidaydale before. Oh, with you? No, not with me. And, well, I definitely haven't pins. walked around anybody like that. No? No, I have not. <laughs> but I will say, <laughs> we, had a, we had a win Sunday. You weren't there again. Made up some excuse. Um, trade deadline. I told you. What do you think you get for me? 
Huh, nothing, because you don't show <laughs> up. That's why I can't trade just, you. Just, just having my name on the roster is not any value? No. No? <laughs> not right now. Not if you don't show up. But uh, the funny thing is, uh, Brian Donahue, my boy Donnie, you know Donnie. Yeah. He, uh, he filled in, uh, played for us, and... Uh, he hadn't played in a while, and it, first, second period, he was just like, he was getting really frustrated. He hasn't played in yeah, forever. Yeah. He's like, dude, I'm out of shape. I, You know, I can't do anything. And in the third period, he gets a natural hattie. No way, three, really? And then he gets the G-dub in overtime. So four goals. Wow. <laughs> yeah. All four so, in a row? And we won 5-4. And it was it was kind of fun. At first, I thought the guys, like, we play these guys, and they're all good dudes. Uh, they were mad because Donnie was playing. I'm like, well, we normally have Riley here. And, you know, J.D. wasn't there. Matty Denton wasn't there. So wow. they were all bent out of shape, and they didn't even have their goalie. But I think it was kind of more in fun, I, I hope, Not anyway, because sure. it's men's league. I mean, let's be honest. But, uh, yeah, Donnie, big shout-out oh, to wow. Donnie. Fuck, 4 G is not a big deal. Jeez. But um, Celebration. I know. I know. I know. It's crazy. Uh, Edmonton. Whew. Our buddy got a job, but we had coach lost a job. Woodcroft got fired. Yep. Actually, if you saw that clip, he's walking across the last game he yeah, coached, I saw and he that. says to Dave Manson, We're done, uh, this, that, was the last that one. might be it, or something like <laughs> yeah. that. And he goes, yep. Yep. <laughs> that sucks, though, but it's part of the job, man. Why, why did everyone seem so shocked? I'm not sure. Do you, did you see that or feel that? Like I, Everyone's like, well, we didn't see it coming. Like, how, how do you, do you not? not? Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. What I didn't see coming was was uh, Nauber getting in there. But, I mean, I, I don't know him. You know him. Yeah. But he sounds like a great guy, great coach. So, from that standard, I can see why. But yeah. it seems like, you know, and plus a lot he of coached, available coach. He coached, yeah, well, that's it. But uh, then the, Connor the, and Junior, you know. Yeah. And he's done an unbelievable job in Hartford. And yeah. even, you know, he got called up to the Rangers – when the coaches were sick and stuff, and I think he went undefeated as a head coach. Now, yeah. I know it's just yeah. bits and, you know, just here and there, but um, great man, really yeah. good family guy, like heard. one of the nicest dudes I've ever met. Played men's league with us. Uh, he played in a tournament with us, I should say. Um, but uh, great guy, man, and I'm happy for him. And he gets the W. Yeah. His first coach. You know, that usually happens, right? Like, that happens a lot, but I was the happy they rally won. around, yeah. Maybe they can uh, get it going, you know, like start getting some bounces because – like we said last week, I haven't seen a ton of their games. I've watched more because of the way they've been playing, but they haven't had a lot of puck luck. Yeah. Um, but they kind of got it the other night on McDavid's goal. Kind of the goalie kind of knocked it in himself, but doesn't matter. At doesn't this point. matter. They just yeah. need wins, and yeah. hopefully they can keep it going for old Chuck. I love Nobber. Yeah, yeah, it'd be it'd be interesting to see how it plays out. Uh, but you could, you know, I saw an interview with uh, with uh, Nob on. Uh, on, it was on spitting chicklets actually it was yeah. just like a, the, the blurb of his press conference and you know it's such a you could just see he's such a good guy yeah. he got emotional and asked about like how did you land up here you know and who yeah. do you got to thank and he mentioned his wife and his family and everything he got emotional i was like oh, you make, you yeah, make you want to cry but, i know right yeah, but he's, he's got a guy you want to play for you know because he cares and uh, you know his heart's in it but uh, i thought it was interesting you know just seeing like the press conference when they announced the firing like how kenny holland saying oh yeah we talked to the players and then he passes it over to the president he's like no <laughs> yeah. no 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 conversation or, or, or no conversations at all no nothing we didn't talk to the players like well, what is it? Well, which one? Did you talk to the players or did you not? <laughs> well, yeah, well, exactly. <laughs> it was like, clearly you did. Like, I mean. <laughs> yeah, oh, something, something had to I go down. I don't know, but like. I'm sure the core guys. The core guys. You, well, exactly. Right? You know, but, uh, you know, it's always funny when they try and dust things under the rug. Everyone's trying to like hold up a lie. And yeah. Be all stoic about what's going on. Like, geez. Like, Just tell us. Big secret. You Just know? tell us. Yeah. You can't tell us all the secrets, <laughs> you know, but you can tell not. us a little bit. Um, but our boy, the big boy. Oh, yeah. Not a big deal. 200 win the yeah, other night. Yeah, he was jacked up. Um, that was awesome. Talked to him after the game. Congratulated him. Yeah. What do you think he said to me? You like big tits? That's exactly what he said. <laughs> he actually said, you don't like oh, them. <laughs> and I said, oh, I do. Uh, but uh, congrats, Chief. That's yeah, awesome, that's man. Big, yeah. he's, he's he's awesome, dude. Yeah. He's, just, he's the best. Yeah, I um, love that clip. I saw, you know, you must have saw it too. Just like the clip in the, the locker boys? room. Yeah. yeah. And Shenner and just like the boys all rallying around. Even Otter got squeezed his head <laughs> yeah, in there. Yeah, Otter, he's <laughs> awesome too. <clears throat> Those guys, they, they work well together, man. Um, our boy, Yogs, mm. they're retiring his number. Why? He was pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not bad. Not bad. <laughs> Played pretty pretty well. Why, why is his number not retired? Hey, good point. Uh, well, it is going to be. Yeah. It's going to be. Well, good. He's, Someone came to their senses. Yeah. Yeah. So, 
Um, right congrats. beside 66, you right think? Right beside him. Yeah. Probably. Yeah. I would say so. <laughs> Love Yox. Hopefully we can get him on here, try to track him down. Maybe Jake can help us with that because yeah. Yogg's a busy man. Maybe but, we get um, Yogg's in the alumni game. What do you think? For which team? He played for both. <laughs> yeah, it's good point. <laughs> Flyers, I was yeah, thinking, Flyers, obviously. I would, I would say that'd be the place. Yeah. I um, forgot you were. Yeah, but the... congrats, Yogg's. And um, some sad news, man. Roman Czechmonic uh, passed yeah. away. Not sure. Too sure. young. Yeah, 52, 52 years old, man. And we had just been talking about him with Boosh uh, a couple of weeks ago. Um, he was a really good guy. He's actually a funny guy. It's a, it's a shame. I don't know what happened, um, but uh, rest in peace, brother. Yeah, yeah, too it's bad. tough. Yeah, too bad, too early. And you know what? what? I want a quick shout-out from you and I to Kelly Sweet. Oh, yeah. Bob Sweet's yes, lovely yes, wife. Kelly. She was uh, messaging us this week uh, saying hello. Just hope you're feeling better. Yeah, hope you. And uh, we miss you. Just want to say hi to you. Yeah, oh, she's uh, she's always been a huge supporter of yep. others, and uh, well, the whole family, the whole family. The whole family yeah, yeah. So, no, she's uh, had had some struggles, but we just yep. wish her the best. Wish and, her the best. And um, I think we're ready to rock. Here I think now. we're ready to rock. Yeah. All right. One thirty-four. Yep. With our good pal Sean Thornton. Oh, Thirty Thor- cakes. Thirty cakes. Thirty cakes. Let's go. All right, here we go. Before we get to our interview, we have a message from our sponsor, HelloFresh, America's number one meal kit. With so many in-season ingredients, you'll taste all the freshness of fall in every bite of HelloFresh's chef-crafted recipes. Produce travels from the farm to your door for peak ripeness you can taste. HelloFresh does all the shopping and meal planning for you. Ingredients arrive at your doorstep, pre-portioned and ready to cook, along with pictured step-by-step recipe cards. How easy is that? Be sure to go to HelloFresh.com slash 50 Knuckles and use code 50 Knuckles for 50% off plus free shipping. That is HelloFresh.com slash 50 Knuckles and use code 50 Knuckles for 50% off plus free shipping. Welcome back. I'm Riley Cote. And I'm Derek Suttlemeyer. This week, we are super, super excited to have a guy I've known since 1998. Wow. Met him in 98, 97, 98 season, drafted by the Toronto Maple Leafs. Uh, in the 97 NHL entry draft, this guy played 705 NHL games. What's wow. really impressive is he also played 605 American Hockey League games. Whew. It's an amazing career. Let's welcome to the show, Sean Thornton. I like to call him Thornton Cakes. Oh, What's yeah. up, brother? <laughs> Gentlemen, good to see you. Thanks for having me. Oh, yeah, man, thanks for joining time. us. We appreciate you, man. God, Thornton, met you back in 98 in St. John's. Never forget, you fought Woody, Stone Cold Steve McLaren, and then after the game, <clears throat> I ran into you. It was the first time I ever met you. We had a may have had a couple beers and uh, one of the these. St. Uh, John's, yeah. yeah, in St. John's, yeah. What was the name of that street? George George Street. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We uh, but uh, met you there, and uh, just one of the great guys in hockey. Uh, so fortunate to get to know you a little bit, and always we always just said hi and shot the shit a little bit, and. Uh, Man, I tell you what, your your whole your story, I mean, playing that long, uh there are many I don't know if anybody's done that. I mean, you they the, haven't uh the six hundred first in the AHL, then seven hundred they haven't. I think there's like two other guys that did it, but it was the flip. They played the NHL and then wrote it out uh, in the minors. So okay, yeah, I mean, it, probably it, not tough guys though. It, it's it, hard. I know you, you had a hard the minors, man. Had the four hundred tilts or whatever the hell. No, oh yeah, my exactly. god, it was impressive. You were obviously in the American League. Uh, that's where I got to know you, and you were one of the toughest guys in the league every year. And and not only tough, but you played the game and you did it the right way. You know, that's you right. you were one of those guys that. You're an that's honest a guy. Of that's a matter well, of yeah. <laughs> well, well, to, to me, I thought, you know, because we had a lot too. of toughness in Philly, as you know, yeah. and you guys, you you had a, you know, you usually were with tough teams. I obviously you were doing, you were carrying the load, but uh, it, it was amazing uh, that whole journey for you. I mean, we'll talk about it, but uh, just wanted to throw that out there. It's pretty, pretty fucking amazing, man. Yeah. On, on Philly, I literally, I, I had a celebratory drink when they tore down the old spectrum. I hated going <laughs> in that place. That You're not the first to say that. Three, always three and out usually when I was in there on a Sunday after traveling from whatever, Wilkes Bar, Binghamton. Yeah. God, yeah. that place went down. <laughs> a, thank you. Yeah, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it probably wasn't that 
fun coming into Philly. I'm sure back then because I think we've heard a lot of my era. I was always that. three or four yeah, or five always tough after guys. noon games too against you yeah. guys. So it's like I just want to get on that bus and get out of here. But <laughs> yeah. I kind of have to fight my way onto the bus. <laughs> Yeah, for sure. Yeah, not a shortage of uh, adversity probably coming into Philly and no. the, the amount of animals the teams always carried. Yeah, we usually had some. Yeah, so uh, what, then, what, everyone had five or six, right? I know, right? It's a different kind of animal. Pecking order: top three took care of the top three, and then you just every once in a while, some other people get sprinkled in. It was a <laughs> uh, different time, obviously. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, that's the truth. Yeah. So what are you up to these days? I know you're down in Florida. Would you? Yeah. So I moved on to the business side literally three weeks after I retired. Uh, I'm now overseeing all our revenue channels. So ticketing, sponsorship, foundation, community, uh, all kind of report into me. Those are my those are my daily things and some biz development. Uh, I apologize for some noise in the back. Uh, we have pink. We actually have pink here tonight. Uh, oh, wow. Oh, OK. She might, say, you might hear a say hi to her. Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll give her a show. Nats, <laughs> she says hi. Yeah, no, I said what's up. <laughs> yeah, yeah well, that's... I'm in the office every day, five, six days a week, depending on games, and uh, it's fun. It's really fun. Yeah, that's great. That's awesome. How did you land up in that job? Or did you have a, a background in finance or anything like that? No, or how... no, I, I had a general curiosity about the business side of things. When I, you know, you remember, you play in the minors, you're kind of forced as a player to do a lot of things like whatever, dinners, ticket, season ticket holder events, blah, blah, blah. I always enjoyed doing it. Um, and then when I got, really when I got to Anaheim, I was in the hotel by myself for six months and that hotel's right across the street from the rink. I was like, I can go sit in the hotel room by myself or I can sit in the offices and get to know people. Mm -hmm. uh, so I ended up doing that, learning a little bit. And I went to Boston, I, I really dove in. I would sit in the office, you know, a few days here and there and sit with ticket sales, sit with sponsorships, sit with community, sit with foundation, sit with different people. PR, marketing content, and really trying to learn the ins and outs of uh, how the business side worked. And when I got to Florida, our ownership had just bought the team. And when they asked me questions about what I saw in other organizations, it wasn't uh, it wasn't like, ah, oh, the wives need better sushi in the wives lounge or <laughs> yeah. you know, but the hotel isn't good enough. It was more like, why aren't we leveraging players for this, that? Why aren't you doing these things in the community, blah, 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 blah. And our CEO and our minority owner at the time said, you're a little smarter than your job description lets on. So uh, would you like to try coming on the business side? And I had to make a decision between coming on the business side and I also had two job offers back in Boston to do uh, some TV stuff and radio and a little bit with the Bruins. So but I chose this passion. It's worked out. Yeah, good for you. Yeah, good yeah. for you, man. Yeah, that's yeah, uh, yeah, a lot yeah. smarter than I was. I'm going to use my time a little bit better <laughs> instead of drinking and nursing hangovers. We had fun. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right. Oh, oh man. man, good for you. That's impressive. It yeah, really man. I'd uh, love to hear that. It's probably uh, something the young, young, young generational players yeah. could be uh, listening into, and uh, and potentially well, like you too. I didn't make a bank load that I could just sit back and golf every day. So like I, I had to figure something out. And, uh, yeah, I'm glad it worked out. Yeah, definitely. That's great. Yeah. Um, so back to your playing. You you uh you played four seasons with Saint in Saint John's um uh with the Maple Leafs, and uh, you move on to Norfolk, which you're you end up there five five seasons but you get 31 games you finally get you know that call up um how excited were you that's a dumb question but how excited were you when you got that first call to, for that yeah, game so I, I was actually lucky i think i would have been nervous as hell as like, if i got called up my first my second year in the chicago organization i there was a couple injuries in camp and i i made it out of like camp right into the regular season oh, so i got okay. to, i got to crack it i think uh i might have sat out game one and then played game two anyways i but i was up so I can't imagine if I was down in the minors again after six years and all of a sudden I got the call up, I would have probably puked my guts out, but it kind of like <laughs> exploded into the season. And Brian Sutter was our coach and he made me really feel like I, I belonged on the team. I was playing on like the second line with Nylander and Steve Sullivan. I'm like, wow. I'm on the second line of the minors. How the hell am I on the <laughs> uh, But so I was in a good spot and we had a really tough team that year too. So I wasn't like called up, relied on just doing the job. I mean, we had like Chris Simon, Lyle Odeline. We had a bunch of, Wow. Pretty tough guys. So uh, I got to play the game a little bit, which was nice. I think I was up for like 100 games about with Chicago. Only played 30 of them. I was like the extra guy a lot. But as you guys know, being the extra guy in the NHL after five, six years in the minors is way better than being the best guy down in <laughs> the jungle. So That's uh, I wasn't complaining about it. Yeah. That's true. Who, who was your uh, first Tilly with? Ooh. Oh, yeah. No, I do remember. It's Eric Bolton, and he put me oh, on Bolt. the other side of the street. Yeah, I had fought Bolts a few times in junior. I can't remember if I fought him in the minors. I don't know if we played against each other in the minors. But uh, my, all my friends flew in. For, it was like the home opener in Chicago against Buffalo Sabres. 
I took a run at somebody and then I was skating back up. He came off the bench and shook him off and we started swinging. I don't even know how many times we swung, but on his like first or second, he boom, lights out, dropped, gone. Oh, really? Oh. Went, to the, went to the locker room. I was like, that's not how I wanted my first NHL fight to go. <laughs> I had yeah. a lot more to prove myself. So yeah, back yeah. then they weren't even on TV and there's no hockeyfights.com. So <laughs> yeah. No, tell a story <laughs> that's right. you know about it. <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah, that's. It happens all right. Eh? Yeah. I wanted to ask you, like, you know, just going back to your days in 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 or in St. John's, but you played four years there, and you had obviously a, a shitload of pims, and you had pretty good numbers. Did you ever get any insight on why you never got a game with with Maple Leafs? Did they ever talk no, to you about that? You know, I was a little disappointed. I'm not gonna lie to you, but they had Ty Domi, they had Chris King, Wade Belak, they had some guys right. in that role. A couple, uh, there's like one or two times that a couple of them were injured, and I thought I might get the call, but I, I it just never happened, and that's kind of what forced me to to go out and. They didn't uh, qualify me one year. I didn't have an agent. I went out and like called every single GM in the NHL and AHL and ended up getting an opportunity in Chicago. Mike Smith was there. He was the AGM in Toronto when I was in Toronto, and he brought me into camp uh, and, and signed me to a deal out of camp. Oh, amazing. That's cool. Well, it certainly worked out for you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm not complaining. <laughs> yeah. I would like to get up a little quicker, but I'm not, I'm not complaining. Yeah, I'll tell you what. When you went up for good, when you when you got to Anaheim, you never looked back. That's that's for sure. You know. No, um, it was great being on that and, team, getting a cup. I mean, right place at the wow. right time, right? The, the, the thing nobody ever talks about the stats as much unless you're a superstar. And for guys like us, it's just the fact that I have a trophy or two. I'm very lucky, but that that definitely springboarded me into the, the next seven years in Boston and beyond. Yeah, I mean, you you were a big part. I, I remember like being the hockey fan that I am and, and kind of knowing you a little bit, I, I was so excited for you. And then especially like you were a part of that team, like you were playing, you were, I mean, you're a big part and uh, it was just so cool to see you lift that cup, man. Um, it's a dream for everyone, oh, yeah. right? Like even go. equipment guys, you know, like to do that, but it, it was really cool to see you do that. And you play with one of our buddies prongs. Yeah. Uh, yeah. He's a beauty, isn't he? He is. You, you always know where you stand with Mr. Pronger, that's for sure. <laughs> he was good to me, though, because we had, like, the Peterborough connection. We played in the same town, and obviously yeah. he really respects guys that were in my role. Uh, so mm -hmm. I know he was great. I, he came to work with us in Florida for a little bit afterwards. After his that's right. Was too. That's he right. He was assistant GM here with Dale. And, uh, yeah, me and, Prongs, me and Prongs get along pretty well. Big unit. He is he is a monster of a man. I've never seen legs that long and a torso so short. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> That's yeah truth, oh yeah floating around out there with the pool skimmer he's, yeah. he's so much reach <laughs> like a spider rigatoni that's yeah. what he's always coming in the morning rigatoni that's yeah he called riles oh well, um, well, prongs called me that yeah he that's what always, i'm saying yeah, i know that's yeah exactly saying. and then it evolved into um, several other things so like you said a kind of a springboard you win the cup you're a big part of that team and, and you end up in boston for the next seven years and you're a huge part of their team every year no matter what man like um I, I loved seeing you there and it was just, you made the game fun and you knew guys couldn't fuck around, but one of the best fights you always see it is coming up is you two uh, going at it, obviously just chucking. And I, I think I said this last week, but I don't know if you remember this and maybe I read your lips wrong, but I'm a pretty good lip reader. But I remember when you guys squared off, you were like looking at Rousey. You said, just like old times. Yeah. Because you guys, and I just <laughs> well, thought that was so cool. absolute fucking battles down in Norfolk in the minors. I didn't know who Rouse was. Like, I'd been in the league for what, four years, five years? Because I, yeah, five years. Like, and you had just come from the Western Hockey League. And back then, there, again, there was no social media, there was no video. And then, He's running around like an idiot. And I'm like, who is this young kid? I'm going to smack his lips off. And then we square off. I'm like, oh, I guess I'm not smacking his lips off. He's a little tougher than I thought he was going to be. So we had some battles down there. Uh, and then when we got to that point in the season, I mean, I tell you what, I've become good friends with the Dropkick Murphys because of that fight. I went to like an after show like two or three days later. And Ken uh, Casey came up to me. He's like, you're a fucking animal. You're a fucking animal. <laughs> I was like, we used to do that. We used to do that for peanuts down in the minors. Yeah, I know, right? 20,000 20, people watching now instead of four. We used to just yeah. scout guys watching us. Uh, I know, right? A little different energy for sure. Yeah, those are those are the the days. I mean, it's like I, I, it's hard to believe actually that that we used to do that because it was like. <laughs> yeah. You know, I just like look at some of these clips. I'm like, fuck. I'm like, I know. one of those two fights there. Um, in Boston Gardens, you broke my nose. I think it was the second one. It was almost in the exact same spot. It was almost the exact same fight, really. Yeah, it was. Uh, but it was just like a, 
yeah man you're always a gamer so every time i played you i knew it was like there's a probably a pretty damn good chance that we we're gonna fight and, um well, we're you know, both the same size and you're majority a lefty i'm actually left-handed but same as you throw ambidextrous so i knew i think one time in the minors i tried to go left for left and i think you got the better of me i'm like i'm just fuck this i just got to come straight down the pipe and let the better man win at this <laughs> point because i i knew i wasn't out messing you with my left uh and it ended up being yeah, an amazing fight there was no no defense in either of those I'm no sure. no <laughs> no it was, it was definitely blow for going, blow. Oh, yeah. oh, I'm the best. they're just going but there wasn't anyone sitting in the seat no no Not a fucking no, chance no, no. it was awesome yeah philly and awesome. boston those those crowds are very similar their their fan base is very similar they, they don't they don't shy away from the uh the violent stuff I'll tell you what, I, I just this just popped in my head. I don't care, Thorny, if you lost the fight, Jack Edwards would not say you did. Oh no, you could be I do too. You could be sleeping, and he's like, Oh, Thorny, he just uh he he won and he's taking it. He made it a <laughs> <laughs> it's unbelievable. Oh, oh, I man. love listening to him yeah. bullshit, man. Holy fuck. Um, but anyway, uh Boston, um, I do have to bring up one. You, you turn around and shoved it up our ass, but um, the feeling uh, when you guys are up three, nothing, the, the, you know, 2010 and we ended up going to the finals, but uh, we come back in that series, the guys come back and win that, that, that must've been like, you'd already won a cup, but still, man, you're hungry no, for it, another one. Right. That was, had to be tough. City, like you couldn't, I couldn't get away from it. Like all summer. Cause I, I stayed in Boston all summer. I, when we signed there, I said, I've heard so many great things about the city. Like, let's let's actually give it – got to deal with the winters. Let's enjoy the summers. And that summer, I'm not sure I was enjoying it as much. But <laughs> I will say, like, we got up 3 nothing. We got a little complacent. We lost Kretsch, too, right, which is a big mm -hmm. piece. That's Mike huge, Richards. Huge puzzle. Um, but I think we got a little complacent. Then we were up 3 nothing in the final game in the first period. And I saw – I was looking around. Guys were celebrating. Like, we haven't won shit yet. Like, we – and I, I do think that we had – we needed to learn from it and we took that loss and the next season when we went to the cup and yeah and ended up winning I, i'm not sure if we win the cup without that loss because it really taught mm. us that like the game is never over when you're down you still got a chance right until the final buzzer right. when you're up you better keep the pedal down like it's eight one in two minutes left go score nine who gives a shit like yeah right really so we learned a lot from it yeah it crushed us it sucked but because we had a pretty good team that year too and i think yeah we, and we got through you guys like i think we had a legit chance but you know, it took us another year, and it was a definitely a little adversity that we we had to learn from. Yeah, Luch basically alluded the same thing that he thought that that really springboarded you guys yeah. the next year. And the next year, we end up catching you again, and you poop brought the brooms out, <laughs> um, and swept us. Um, but I, I was actually happy to see you guys win because you know yeah. you guys went through that shit the year before. If we weren't going to win. I mean, I thought it was cool. You guys had Rex, good buddy of ours, Mark Rex. Awesome. That guy, dude, he just all he did was win. Mm -hmm. uh, he won great. But yeah, he's he's an awesome guy. But uh, you know, you get your second uh Stanley Cup win, man. Like who would have thought, eh? Like when no, you're sitting, definitely you know, not. Like it's so yeah, cool. when we were sitting in Turkey Joe's or Green Sleeves or whatever the hell it was in St. John's, Newfoundland, having a beer, there's no chance I was <laughs> predicting I was gonna have two rings at the end of this thing. Oh, man. <laughs> Turkey Joe's Turkey. That's oh, so man. awesome though, man. Yeah. Can you talk about the, the, the leadership group? I'm going to say both teams. I mean, maybe the differences, because obviously it's a huge part of. Uh, yeah. We're... In Anaheim, you know, we had Timu, both Niedermeyers, Prongs, Sean O'Donnell. Uh, I'm probably forgetting a couple of guys off the top of my head. Todd Marshan. Right. That was kind of the leadership group. And uh, they had all went to like the conference finals, I think, the year before against Edmonton, if I'm not mistaken. And, and That's right. Boston, they were all really close. And I came in and myself, Peros, uh, a few other guys were, we all got along and we were in the room, but we kind of just sat back and, you know, did what we were told and just chipped in where we could and try, tried to be, uh, tried not to be a disruptor. And, and those guys were such amazing leaders. Scott Niedermeyer, Robbie Niedermeyer, like just true, true champions of the game. Tamo, Tamo's never had a bad day in his life. Like every day he showed up to work, didn't matter how bad we were getting skated, how bad Randy was yelling at us. Like that guy was smiling 24 seven. I, I did take something from that. I'm like, you know what? Like we're playing a game for a living. Like, mm -hmm. is it really that bad to get bag skated? Like you're just getting a good workout. Like just enjoy it. I tried to keep that attitude for the rest of my career too. Um, so great bunch of guys. Then we got to Boston. Uh, everyone asked between the two, like which one means more. I would say Anaheim was more exciting because I never thought I'd win a ring and or a cup. And I was in the minors for nine years leading into it. But Boston probably means more because I was part of that leadership group with Rex, with 
Z with Bergie, you know, there's a PJ Axelson, uh, oh, yeah. that when I got there, like we had, we had a really solid group that kind of controlled the room in a positive way and held each other accountable and created a atmosphere that if you weren't playing to the best of your ability, you were letting the person beside you down. And that was the only team I was ever on probably that everyone in that room was genuinely happier for the guy next to them to score 20, 30 goals than they were for themselves to even get any cookies and uh, really genuinely loved each other. So it was a cool group to be a part of and, you know, being a little, getting to play a little bit more minutes and, and be there for a while and, and help contribute. It, that one means a little bit more. Yeah. Yeah. I can see that for sure. It's you guys like were tough special, too. And just like all <laughs> round, all around it, just like, you know, it's uh, what you think of like a, a, a like I carried the workload mostly, but like, at the end of the day, I might have been number three on the totem pole with Big Z when he got mad and like oh, Luch is an absolute God. monster. Like he was young right. at the time, but Big Gino's got as heavy hands as I've ever seen. So um, yeah, I had to step in and do most of it, but the comfortability I had, those two guys were right behind me and maybe tougher than me. Uh, it definitely helps you do your job to do a little bit better of your ability. Yeah, so, yeah, I can see that for sure. I mean, there's a few times I was chirping Chara and I'm thankful that he didn't absolutely snap. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I didn't want to get stuck on the end of one of those poles, but oh yeah. my god, he's, he's, he's definitely got a I should say not a short fuse. It seems like maybe maybe you could probably speak to that, but I mean, the amount of stuff that I said to him and him not reacting, maybe just because I'm a plug and he was just like, Why the fuck would I fight you, anyways? But I'm like, Man, you just like you take a lot, and just like yeah, sit there he, and do, he's, take he's it. a very mature individual to be completely honest. Like, yeah, I bet when he wants to turn it on, there's somebody like he's engaged with and he's passionate, about, like. You don't want to be in the end of that. I've seen no. it too many times. I've seen it too many times. But he I think he looks at the big picture and he's like, maybe in your case, he's like, you know what? Like, I'm playing 30 minutes tonight. Like, of course. Don't engage and then maybe he'll just shut up and leave me alone. <laughs> That's it. I think that was a good strategy. Yeah. Yeah. Or if I fight him, uh, I'm out of the game for five minutes and I don't think I need to be right now. I got three other idiots that can do that for me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. But uh yeah, I know. I mean, obviously it, Having a couple guys like that on your uh, on your side certainly, there you go. And not that you that couldn't pop your chest out. Yeah, I felt like we could play any game, or we felt like we could play any game. You wanted to get down and dirty, like all right. When you go down the pecking order, you get to five or six, and we still have like Johnny Boychuk and Nathan Horton, who guys. Yeah, like, right. They're they're tough, like really tough. Uh, we play that game, or if you want to hit, we can play that game. You want to play skilled, we got we got we could do it any which way we wanted to. And Anaheim kind of felt the same way, so. Uh, I like teams that are built like that personally, but I'm mm -hmm. not a GM, so it's not up to me anymore. But I, I love being on a team that didn't matter who what people were bringing, we felt we could match it. What do you, what do you, it's, it's funny you say that. Uh, well, not funny, yeah. but we talk about that quite a bit. Like, what do you think about today's game? I, I, I feel like you still need something, you know, some grit, yeah. some jam, and, and, and have a guy that can answer the bell. Like they <laughs> do here in uh, Philly right now with, with Delorier. Um, and a lot of teams, you know, some teams do. But what do you, what are your thoughts on the game these days? I know it's different, but yeah, I think the game's as exciting to watch as I've ever seen. Right, like it's faster. It's these kids are doing things on with the puck at like 120 miles an hour. Like my my ankles break just watching them. So, <laughs> like it's uh, it's really impressive what they can do. As far as the fighting stuff, I think I think intimidation is part of life. I think it's part of all life. You walk into a room nine times out of ten, you're sizing it up to see where you stand. You put that into, you know, 200 by 85 with no out of bounds, guys moving 30 miles an hour with sticks in their hand. Like it's a pressure cooker. So it's going to happen whether you have the dedicated guy or not. So in my opinion, I'd rather have a few guys that actually at least know what they're doing to to alleviate the pressure when you need to. So um, I'll be completely honest. I didn't love when me and Riles were expected just to go out and fight each other in the first period. Cause that was our right. job description. Like it, it sucked. It really did. Um, but it was a means to an end. So I'm not going to complain about it. I'm not giving the house back or the nice cars back. Right. We, we yeah. did just fine. Um, but I didn't think it was a great part of the game. I'm glad it was there for us, but it, it sucked. So that part being out of it now, I, I'm okay with it, but I'd still think you need some guys. And I think the guys on the team, I mean, I saw this my last couple of years in Florida, where I wasn't supposed to play much. And they basically went into the coach and said, like, we just feel better when he's around. So put him in the lineup. And I think the guy's really, again, same as life. When you know somebody has your back, like you it's have a, a little bit more confidence. Yeah. 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 Exactly. The reason the role was created in the first place, right? Is yeah. just giving guys some breathing room and just that having that presence, how powerful that is. And that whether you fight or not, just the accountability factors having you there is uh, 
and not to mention like you're a good guy like you we, we got, you want to have a good guy yeah. around and and you got your back you know it's just, yeah, there's like, not too many tough guys that are bad guys this is yeah, this is yeah. True. <laughs> right the yeah, arrogance exactly. was beaten out of us years ago literally yeah <laughs> well it, it's funny because i i gotta throw out some like some of the equipment guys that i'm really good friends with keto and and uh, maddie and in, in boston and obviously frosty's one of my best friends and moods was with him in florida i mean you were by far both both teams you're their favorite guy they oh, i mean awesome, and, yeah. and that's that's the truth uh they were in and as i remember us going i went to dinner with you guys when you were the panthers in philly yeah. here uh the lake we some places like byob i didn't, I didn't even know if yeah. it's a real restaurant the food is amazing though i'm not yeah, even sure was... how to talk about the place like <laughs> yeah right i think you know whose it was yes yeah, uh do. yeah we don't want to bring that up but uh um uh, i just remember uh you know frosty just always had just such great things to say and then just talking to you like you kept the kids in line all the you know and and you kind of ran the room i mean uh from what they said in, in a great way not not like oh this is my room but you know you kept everybody in check and and i know they really appreciate it as an equipment guy you really appreciate that um you you got to play with the late great jimmy hayes broadway sure. man what a, what a good dude we actually went to a after that dinner we went to a spaz's birthday party uh julie spaziano we went to a birthday party with her but um anyway just uh all all the trainers always had such good things to say about you and good to uh, hear you know what yeah i came from the steel factory man like i signed my first deal literally in a steel factory and the work the trainers do like i think it goes unnoticed and usually the same as tough guys like they're i think they're underappreciated maybe a little underpaid and and work harder than most so there's a relatability factor there those guys, yeah, they, I mean, they do everything for you, right? I mean, you come from the minors where you're packing your own bag and unpacking it, and I still think they're overworked. When you get to the NHL and you're not even allowed to touch your bag, it's like the yeah, trainers are right. yelling at you, hey, don't do that. That's my job. I'm like, wait, no, 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 no. We're, we can all do this together. It'll be a lot quicker. Like, no, we'll meet you after for a beer. I don't know. I, I was lucky. I had some great trainers. I had some great coaches, great trainers, and, you know, loved trying to take care of them the best I could. Yeah, they they had nothing. I wish I made more money so I could give them more, but I, 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 gave, them what I, could. I gave them what I could. Rich in experiences, you. though. Yeah, yeah, that's right. That's right. For yeah. sure. Yeah, I could relate. I spent more time in Nasty's office than I did. <laughs> yeah. uh, well, certainly playing, but uh, <laughs> probably more than do what I should have been doing. Yeah. Actually, working on my skills. But yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> it's, um, yeah, we always had a good time. And yes, we did. I mean, I, I yeah, always connected with you guys. I could see. I can see why. Obviously, the, the all, all your staff is connected with you, and the way you treat everybody is is certainly important. Oh, sure. one you know what I was going to ask you too about being in Florida. You, you, obviously, you got to play with Yarmir Yager, uh, yep. one of the greatest ever. But uh, Yandel, how funny is this fucking guy? Oh my God. Like, dude, I, I can only. And you're, I mean, you're a pretty witty guy too. So I can just imagine the shit the chirps, that was. Yeah. Oh, I just sit back and listen. I don't even try and match wits with him. Like, <laughs> the stuff that comes out of his mouth. Like, we see each other probably once a month. We'll go try and golf or grab a beer, catch up. Uh, you know, we were pretty tight when we in Boston during the lockout when we were skating together because he's from there and we have a lot of mutual friends in Boston. So I've got to know him really well. And obviously he was my teammate here. We went to the Super Bowl together. Like he is one of the fact that he was voted like the funniest player in the league for two years straight without like a drip of social media or like <laughs> yeah. doing any media training or anything. And now he has TNT hockey night in Canada, everyone reaching out. Cause and it comes naturally to him. Like mm -hmm. he's never really not any formal stuff. He's just Yans being Yans. And it's just amazing. Like, uh, He's a good, he's awesome. I love that guy. Yeah, I love him. Great guy. Yeah. We, we had him here. Uh, I got, I ran into him a few times with, uh, with, uh, hazy, uh, you know, met, met for some beers and stuff and, and fuck was he funny, man. God, this yeah, shit just is. so dry. And you say shit. Fuck. I laugh. Well, it's stuff you're not even like it's not even in the realm of thinking possibility and all of a sudden it just comes out of his mouth and it's like the funniest thing i don't have an exact example off the top of my head i'm terrible at this but like it'll be the funniest thing you've ever heard and it came out of absolutely like absolutely nowhere i was like what, yeah where did that come from <laughs> he's he's amazing we we were in uh when i was still the team we were playing in uh arizona and he's he's playing on another team and um uh connor murphy is playing over there mm -hmm. and so you know the boys put the you know numbers up on the board yeah. so they got the numbers up well connor hadn't uh put anything up yet so they're kind of like getting ready to go out here and, and still nothing there and uh yeah and says i don't have it i can't do his accent but the the traders came over and told me they were crying they were like uh anybody's uh 
motherfuck one of the coaches over there <laughs> <laughs> talking about birth right. oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> anybody in here got a mom that fucks one of the coaches over there <laughs> you know that accent and i guess the room exploded and murph got up wrote some, you know something on the board but yeah, fuck I, I didn't even know him you know i said yeah. hi to him before but i i laughed i just thought that was one of the funniest fucking things but he that's is a, a perfect funny example guy. yeah yeah that's a good accent too nest Wow, I'm not very good at that. But no, it was just the way. Oh man, he made. You could have blended right into Charles. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, I wanted to ask you about that. We talked a little bit about fighting, but just the um, your, your your mindset. Obviously, if, you know, whatever five six years in the minors, like like so many so much more meat down there. Like almost probably harder minutes than than NHL minutes. Like, but uh, just talk about your mindset and like. You mean, drink it away. Just drink, drink it, it away. away. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but. My first couple of years, like I, I had, I was probably young, hungry, still had something to prove. I never really loved it, but like uh, I knew it was my way in. Right. And I didn't want to go back to the steel factory. I wasn't going back to my hometown. So you did what you had to do. Uh, and I had a mentor, this guy, uh, Greg Bird Dog Smith. He's one of the oh. crazy. Yeah. He's oh, yeah. Right. Away, God rest his soul. Yeah. Uh, great mentor for the miners because he was all about like make them think you're the craziest motherfucker out there even if you're a sane intelligent individual you're just going to get a little bit more breathing room he mm -hmm. used to tell me, something stupid you need to be suspended for two to three games a year minimum for people just to think about what you might do and maybe people leave you alone for 41 of the 82 games and he, he wasn't wrong because every night down there there's there's a potential right and right. i think i was fighting 35 36 37 times it's like every other night down there yeah it's, 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 <laughs> it's, lot, it's too much mentally let alone the physicality of it mentally it's just too much so um my mentality is get through it hopefully get a call up get a chance um i also you know as we all are we're gladiators and have egos in the I, I guess talent we have as fighters like i had to tell myself i was the baddest man in the room or the baddest man in the league even though i probably wasn't and then if i lost i would be rattled if i lost because and I'd want to get back and get out there and fight the guy again because I thought he had took taken something away from me. So mm -hmm. that was my mentality. I definitely that that slowed down as I got older. Like when I'm when I was in my 30s in the NHL, I was like, other than our battle where we punched each other in the face for two minutes, like I, I was like, <laughs> just get through it. Just don't get hurt. Like, <laughs> like I had a coach tell me once, like the thought of what you're gonna do is scarier than what you're actually gonna do, probably. So just mm -hmm. make people think you're scary. And then hopefully you can just coast through for the rest. And that's kind of what I did for the last few years. It was people were intimidated because of my past, not so much yeah. what I was doing at the moment. Yeah, yeah, you earned the street credit for sure. Yeah, I know it's a uh, it's a it's a grind, and um, you know I can relate to, to 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 what you're saying there for sure. But I never got to the point where I could just coast and just like <laughs> live off my past. So it was just like another <laughs> year. I got to do this again. I got to fight these guys again. You know, it's like I. I just never, you know, got to the point where I could breathe, you know, and say like I've I've done enough to like sit back and, you know, play I think when I got, I think my my few years in Boston too, when I was playing on that line with Soupy and and Pisey, and we were playing in between, you know, eight and fourteen minutes a night. Mm. Then I had the opportunity to be like, man, I not tonight. Like I got I got fourteen minutes out here tonight. I can't be fighting every single game and that kind of, mm -hmm. but you know how it is when we first got started you're playing two three minutes a night if you're not doing it what the hell is your contribution so you're, <laughs> yeah. you're almost you force yourself to do it right so yeah. that, that kind of helped a little bit too when i finally got some more minutes down there yeah no i could see that for sure yeah if, if i would have got 10 14 minutes a night i probably wouldn't be trying to fight every shift i had <laughs> <laughs> just just to just, just to accomplish what you said just to feel like i just did something in the game besides being a yep. gro grocery divider but um yeah yeah i was gonna say it's, it's funny you brought up bird dog man because uh, i had him my very first year in florida i was there the inaugural year that's how old i am 30 cakes i know you didn't know 39? that but uh, <laughs> yeah. uh but i was there in uh you know 93 94 and we bob clark he had been with the flyers clark he brought him in and uh, i had known him as a kid and you know i'm really good buddies with craig baruby i met him when i was a kid and and those two they used together, to be roommates right yeah, you heard the stories were, like oh, oh my yeah. god oh they're fucking <laughs> insane but the yeah. the thing that you said you know that he told you act crazy i that was bird dog like he yeah. act, even when he came into the rink it was almost kind of like you knew he was fucking around but he'd just be like be like hey morning bird dog. he'd be like fuck off you know like and he was just always like that we got he got hurt he broke his hand the I think it was the first game of the year we played Chicago 
And so they sent him back because he had to get something done to his hand. And uh, he goes, hey, let's go tonight because the boys are playing against St. Louis, game two of the year. So I was I stayed back. It was my first year. And anyway, long story short, we go, he goes, let's go, let's go eat some dinner. He took me and Tink, you know, Scott Tinker, yeah. me and Tink. Yeah. He took us to dinner at uh, Olive Garden, Big Spender, Big Spender. Oh, Olive yeah. All <laughs> yeah, we eat salad we, breast yeah, breast yeah. yeah, all you can eat. A lot of minor uh, league meals for bird dog. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So anyway, uh, we go to eat dinner, and then we're going to go watch the game, right? It's, a, it's this crabby jacks down the street. But uh, bird dog's sitting there, and and there happened to be two birthday parties. You know, they come out yeah, yeah. and singing, and, he, you know, bird dog's like, I'm going to fucking lose it if they have another one of these fucking and they're not bothering him we're in a restaurant you know just people are singing you know the right the- dude so Tink goes to the bathroom comes back five minutes later you hear this they come, they come to our table they put it the bird dog and they're singing the bird dog and he's just red he's like looking at us oh, then he just classic. started laughing but you're you're right man that was his mentality you know like when he played chief chief told some great stories about him but uh I, yeah, I, I forgot you guys was around ones like literally a guy pulling a knife out. I heard and he's wrapping his arm and bird dog chased the guy with the knife down the street, trying to beat the hell out of him. <laughs> like in some back town in Alberta. Like he, the guy was his last yeah. year with me. He played 38 games. I think he was suspended for the rest of them. He had like two back to back, like 12 or 14, 14 game suspensions. And he should have been in jail. Like nowadays he would have been in jail. <laughs> oh <laughs> yeah, for sure. How about that? He, they went to Calgary. The GM ends up getting him. So Chief picks him up and he goes, let's go have some beers. It was in the afternoon, go grab some lunch. And he's like, there's all these bikers and they're in this little bar they go to in Calgary and they're shooting pool. And you know how you put your name up? Yeah. Bird dog right up to wipes it down. Yeah, you know. <laughs> Come on. Gets all the balls, Chief and Bird Dog. He puts them in and they just play. Chief goes, Holy fuck, oh, boys, man. we're in one. <laughs> we might I guess, yeah, somebody one. came up and was like, What's a bird dog? And he's like, I'm a fucking bird dog. And like, <laughs> yeah. that was the end of the story. Like, he, yeah, he's another level. Like, I, I miss that, man. Did, yeah. Hey, did you ever hear the story quickly about him going across the, the Walt Whitman Bridge? So yeah. he's, Oh, you did? Flyers, flyers. And the <laughs> lady opens the door after like three times. She's like, what? You got to put the money. He goes, we the flyers. She goes, I don't give a fuck who you with. Put the money in. Because <laughs> all the guys are like, all you got to do is say flyers. Just say it to the basket because you used to throw a quarter in there. Oh, yeah. Now it's five bucks. Yeah, right. <laughs> and he's going flyers. Fucking flyers. He's lying. He's losing it. Oh, yeah, that's, that's that story. Everybody knows that one. Oh, that's good. Anyway. That is good advice, though, on, uh, you know, a- acting crazier than you are. You know, it- I did the you same did thing. I did the exact same thing, you know, and it's amazing. It's like, you know, it's a game of psychology. You, know, you puff your chest out. Even if I didn't want to fight, you know, just getting in someone's head and, yeah. and, and standing in front of them, looking them in the eye. It's just like how it's just, it's wild, you know? You and, didn't want to fight LaRock? <laughs> I, I, I would rather not. <laughs> <you know? laughs> but uh, yeah, I didn't, well, I didn't have to stare them in the eyes and like puff yeah, my chest true, over that one. True. But, you know, just like staring someone down and, you know, it, it kind of like translated into, into the real world. It was just like, it's it's amazing when you, you the way you hold yourself, you know, people don't want to engage, you know, people no. just want to, people just want to like be left alone and, you know, and how much space it gives you, you know, not that I'm looking at f- fertility's now, but like, you know, um, so it's great advice because I, you know, I didn't have someone tell me, I just kind of figured that's what I had to do, you know, to, to yeah. act a little crazier than I was to get maybe a little space and street cred, but Did the other ten- advice was always come in all guns a blazing. If there's yeah. a pile of scrum, like come in, <laughs> cross check somebody in the face with your gloves <laughs> off and then like start just tossing, like don't. And back then, you know, there was so many like five on fives and three on four. Right. He's like, don't be standing around. Don't be the guy just hanging on to somebody. You come in all guns a blazing every time. I was like, all yeah. right, dog. And then if you didn't, oh my God, you had to deal with him in practice the next day. And he was oh. coming at you all guns a blazing. So <laughs> you're a great guy to learn from. Yeah, oh, man, that's good man, advice. That's great. Um, one of my favorite clips, I get all these hockey clips come up all the time and it's the chirps. When you tell they are, they are nay. Is how you say they, I, uh, yeah. they, they, they said, aren't you a little small to be rocking that uh, handlebar mustache? <laughs> it's one of my <laughs> fucking favorites. I fucking laugh. I gotta say the Bruins did a great job. My buddy, Matt Schmuro is like the head of PR and marketing. And we are, we were mic'd up all the time and we were able to do it. The players allowed it. Cause we were so close with them. Like we trusted him. So right. those are all like 
outskirts from them trying to film before they actually did it this behind the b show that they do now so yeah. we were mic'd up all the time and then he pulled a bunch of that stuff and I, I don't know if he put it out there or somebody put it out there but i guess it gets sent to me probably once every two months somebody's like have you seen this i'm like yes i, <laughs> I was an idiot i, I, I was there i was there yeah. <laughs> that's my voice <laughs> yeah. no there were there's some good ones on it but it was, it was funny like it's nothing bad but it's it, it's kind of true. Yeah, he's, I know. He's it, my size. He's rocking a fucking handy. Uh, oh, people love and to a hear that. Stuff. with a turtleneck. Oh yeah. That was I still don't too. understand that though. I was being serious. I wasn't even chirping. I'm like, why are you still wearing that? I don't get it. It looks terrible. Yeah. Oh man. Yeah. If it was just for style, if there was, like, maybe there's some padding there. Kovalev can actually, get away with it. Oh, Kovalev. Yeah, he got good style. Yeah, he can yeah. do whatever he wants. Yeah, he can do whatever he wanted. He probably never had a fight a day in his life, but I actually didn't want to grab a hold of him. He was as strong of a human being as I've ever really? seen out there. Yeah, he was a beast. Wow. You talk about Kovalev? Yeah. 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 I tried to fight him in warm ups one night. Remember? What? Remember playoffs where I put my stick in his face? I, got oh, yeah, I was I obviously not fighting him. <laughs> yeah, it was a playoff game. I wasn't even playing. It's just warming up, and I. It, it was, was the coffee, the suit, co- yeah. everything. It was the concoction. Like yeah. He was like one of those Russian guys that came up with an upbringing that like we didn't know about, and was like, if I grab him, he's just gonna beat the hell out of me, like, <laughs> like absolute nails, and also just the most skilled guy out there. Oh yeah, best style too. Nasty, best Nasty style. loves his style. He I love his style. Everything tough. was perfect. The gloves, his jersey yeah, was. was just right. Fuck his yeah, socks, the tongues out. The short he actually stick. signed a Panthers jersey for me, and it said "Too Nasty." I love your on ice style because I was. T- Telling him how much I like the way That's he, great. he looked. You got a stick. You got a stick sign for from him to and gave it to me too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. That's right. <laughs> for the for the twenty five hundred dollar uh, fine that I had to pay, put my stick in his face. <laughs> <laughs> he signed a stick and gave it to me. That's awesome. Oh uh, yeah. yeah. Oh man. Yeah. So uh, are you are you still uh, doing your your foundation? You, yeah. Are you working on foundation? Yeah, yeah. We have two or three events a year, mostly based out of Boston. Uh, we give half the money to. Uh, Parkinson's research and then half goes to pediatric cancer some research and some donations to like the Jimmy Fund and Dana Farber different things are doing up in Boston so nice I think, I think we're in 11 the 11th year now oh, well. it's been good. I mean we're lucky to have a platform and th- especially in that city with the way the the fans in the town really rally around the players and and enjoy when people get back to the community a little bit I've been very lucky it's uh Golf tournament sells out every year, like months in advance. Ninety percent of the people just keep coming back because they're having a good time and want to support my cause. So, yeah, I'm pretty lucky there. That's Beautiful awesome. putts and punches. Putts and punches. I like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah made up. I, I cannot take credit for the name. A uh, girl named Aaron that worked in the Boston Bruins community uh, team came up with it, so we ran with it. That's, oh, that's pretty great. Cool. It's a good one. Any chance you're playing the alumni game in January? The Boston Flyers in Philly. No, I I literally threw my skates off in the garbage when I retired, and I have oh, not really? put them back on. I, I, that's a lie. I put them on twice during uh, the three weeks of COVID we had down here to uh, take my daughters on the ice because they're really really young and you couldn't get them out there. So I put them on for that. Hindsight, I probably could just walk around in my running shoes because they <laughs> yeah. were like one and three, like they weren't moving that quick. Um, but other than that, I I have no desire to put my skates back on ever again. So you don't want to play on our men's league team then? Yeah, yeah no, I get asked all the time. And I'm like, I, we have an alumni game coming up, uh, I think, in December down here with some uh, veterans. And I was asked, I'm like, I, I just, no, I, I don't want to. I don't even know where my cue, I don't have equipment. I literally do not have any hockey equipment anywhere wow. in my house. Yeah. We could Jeez. find you. We could find you. I can get you some. <laughs> yeah, you probably got some. Yeah. Ron Frosty will always take care I of I got some of the, yeah, they, you know they would. They love you, man. Yeah. Um, no, oh, that's I, awesome. I'm kind of the opposite. Right? I feel like uh, I can actually enjoy playing hockey now because I haven't played, yeah. enjoyed playing hockey for eight years. And it's like, well, I shouldn't say that, it like that. That I could see. That I could yeah. see. I mean, Skill I guy. I was 39, though. Like, I, yeah, that's right. I don't know how I played that long, but that's I was incredible. Just done when I was, when I could. I wanted to hang him up at 38, and they called and offered me a contract and said, you might not have to play a game. I'm like, wait, you're going to pay me and I don't have to play? I just got to hang out with the boys? Like, I'm in. And I ended up oh, playing man. like 60 games that year, but uh yeah i was completely dumb when i i was shutting it down so yeah we talked about it off air but like jujitsu is like my new thing yeah. I want. that's my new passion i guess yeah talk about that is it did you just recently competed was that one of your first competitions or you've been doing that for a while? First, first competition i'm mad too I, I i was up to nothing in points with like a minute and a half left and i made a mistake and gave the gold away but uh it was it was i said i wouldn't compete in anything when i retired too i was like and my wife was you know so I spent 20 years, well, not 20, she wasn't with me the whole time, but whatever. I spent a decade chasing you around while you're competing for things. Like you're, you're not taking 
weeks to prep for different jiu-jitsu competitions, make weight, do all this stuff. Like those days are done. So I abided by it for five years. And my gym was all over me to compete. They thought I'd do well. So I entered the Miami Open was like 45 minutes down the road. I was there, you know, I literally showed up, competed. You're out of there in like an hour and a half. And then I went and had some beers because I've been starving myself for three weeks to try and make weight. Um, mm. But I like it. I've been doing it for 10, 12 years. Uh, I started when I was playing in Boston. Uh, I do it in all the off seasons. And when I moved to Florida and retired the last seven years, I'm in there four or five days a week. It's it's enjoyable wow. for me. That's amazing. Wow, that's really a little cool. more of a chess match than than than, than uh, hockey brawling. Hey, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> thinking. It's crazy. Like I I'm a fairly high level purple belt now, and like I get dusted daily. There's just so many different levels to this sport, and mm -hmm. you know you see guys with seven stripes on their black belt and you're like ah, how like did you yeah. run when you got the <laughs> right? like, and they just toy with me i'm a lot bigger than them they just like i'm like a little baby in their arms sometimes so Crazy. it's a pretty remarkable sport the the fact that you your size can matter but doesn't really matter if you know what you're doing like it's it's pretty remarkable yeah pretty slippery eh? those guys oh the, yeah the, like oh yeah, so, yeah i'm trying to get my daughters into it i but they, they haven't bought in yet i thought no. maybe that <laughs> I thought maybe them watching me compete too might be like edge them into it a little bit more, but uh, they weren't into it yet. Hopefully Not yet. Like, you know, Max Talbot's into that. Yeah. He does yeah. a lot of that. I saw he compete. Yeah. I think Sean That's what he wants too. to wrestle. No, I actually like Max. Yeah. Yeah. Sean Sean listen, so I'd love to roll with him. Supposedly he's a jiu-jitsu guy. <laughs> yeah. Oh, is he? Is yeah, he? he's been doing oh, it too. Oh, I didn't yeah. know that. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that. Oh, wow. Yeah. Any cauliflower ear going on there? A little bit. Yeah. Uh, maybe this side, yeah, a little bit. Yeah, I, had a, I actually had it when I was playing. I got I got in a fight once in the minors, and a guy swung and missed and like caught my ear, and it blew up. I'm like, what the hell was that? And it's gotten worse over the years. But I had it from a random ass fight that the guy missed his punch and just clipped my ear. I don't know what happened, but it blew up and hasn't gone down. But it's <laughs> coming. I mean, I'm 46 now. Does it really matter if my ears blow up? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> Still just looking good, though, credit, man. You see a cauliflower, you'd be like, "Stay away from that guy." Yeah, <laughs> yeah right. Yeah. That's Especially with how our noses already look from that <laughs> yeah. stuff we had to do. That's oh, the truth. Man. That's the truth. Uh, Thorny, we can't thank you enough, man, for your time. I know you're a busy guy. Um, I mean, I didn't know if you were going to be talking to third person. You got guys handling your stuff. You're so important yeah. now, man. I love it. Well, I live off my schedule, and it's it's a busy one. We got you know meeting after meeting after meeting, and I was like. Zach, can you please help me out with this? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Figure it out. So we appreciate uh, it. A lot, a lot quicker. But no, it's good to talk to you guys. Yeah, uh, man. Riley, you were an absolute warrior. I hated going up against you for what's that worth. Uh, I, <laughs> I did not look forward to it. So uh, I felt like I was fighting a mirror and I didn't like it. So <laughs> I feel the same way. Much respect, man. You had a hell of a career and tough as yeah. nails, man. I got nothing but respect for you. Yeah, so yeah. thanks. Nice thanks. to reconnect. Not on yes. the ice. <laughs> not on the ice. <laughs> yeah. Nasty, right. always a pleasure, my man. Anytime. Yeah. You're you're the best, man. You're one of the greatest guys I met in hockey, man. Really good dude. Thanks, buddy. You got All right, it. guys. I'm Thanks get back again, to work man. now, so they don't fire me. <laughs> say, <laughs> don't forget to say hi to Pink. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm on my way down there right now. Just, yeah. just, just tell her uh, Nasty said hi. She'll know what you mean. Big thank you to our good friend, Sean Thornton. Thirty cakes. What a beauty. What a big timer. Yeah. He's moving up in the world. Oh, yeah. Nah, great guy, man. Tough fucker. You oh know that. Gosh, you, yeah. two, you two had your... Uh, he was, battles as he was we a talked gamer. about oh yeah oh yeah he was a gamer for a long time yeah long time uh yeah. great guy though man he was <clears throat> as i mentioned he treated the staff really well he always made sure the young guys were respectful of the room and all that stuff so i just remember talking to him all the time he was a frosty in florida there yeah. and um everywhere he was in, in boston maddie and, and my buddies keto and uh they loved him He's a real team guy, so yeah, hell of a career, man. Yeah, just, really. Just slug it out that long. I know. A couple cups. Couple cups. Yeah. Fuck, he deserved it, man. He yep. battled a long time. Yeah, no doubt. So sure wish did. him the best. Yes. And it's that time. You think it's that time? I hundred percent believe it's that time. I believe it is. It's time for clear questions. Brought to you by Clear Rum dot com slash shop rigs oh yeah and use that code nasty 2023 and you get 35 percent off of your order in pa only, only not new jersey PA. but uh get it in you and we need some more fellas i need more reload reload all right baller let's go baller we're starting it off here with bio 1771 over on instagram he said if you guys are going on a vegas bender cool. who's in your starting lineup Got to be former teammates, three forwards, two defensemen, and one goalie. 
Oh, wow. <laughs> okay. Well, that's a packed question. Well, the goalie's Neil Little. I mean, that's just not even a question. So we'll start or, or, there. Uh, or Nitty. Or Nitty. But Nitty doesn't really talk. Litz will talk. Yeah, you know, right, Nitty right, gets yeah. in that spot where yeah. he starts making faces. That's he right. He talks yeah. a little bit to, <laughs> yeah, his, to yeah. his shoulder with, yeah, yeah. with the says, parrot, yeah. you know. Yeah, yeah. Like, right. So, I mean, we would take Nitty as backup if we of needed. Because yes. those two together were insane. Yeah. Uh, but Litz, as far as the, you know, he's the party director. Uh, party director. There's Yon. There's, there, no, there's no Yon, Yon no, boys. Was, Don't talk about Vegas. He's ready for bad, boys. <laughs> yeah, I got cranky uh, oxygen up he's in here. He's nothing like Debo. Debo, <laughs> you see him pop up when he's at Vegas? Um, anyway, 2D. Whew. DZ? 2D. <laughs> DZ's one for sure. Right. That's a great call. Um, Vegas, I think he's done some damage there. Uh, of course, he's done damage everywhere. Uh, there's another <laughs> D-man. D-man. God, there's so many to pick oh, from. Oh, man, God. yeah. Uh, we have to come back to D. Who's up front there, Nast? Who do you got? Oh, my God. Up front, we got to take Aaron Asham for oh, Ash. fun and toughness. Yeah. <laughs> yeah um, <right. laughs> we definitely need oh, that. Yeah, Ash for sure. So we got Ash. Uh, we got DZ. We got Litz and Nat. So we need two more forwards. I mean, there's so many. My God. Come on. You got to come up with somebody. Oh, I mean, I'm just trying to think. Uh, you think like a guy like Uppy? Hunter Purr. Him and Loops. Him and Loops, Let, Let's right? put them in. Yeah, right? yeah. Him and Loops, for sure. Just toss him in there. To Vegas. I mean, that's going to be a good time. Yeah, I would say so. Good right? talk. Yeah. You got good all the bases covered situations there. situations yeah, right. going on. Uh, and then we need one more, one more D. D. Who we got? Um, I'm going to take Goody. I'm going to take yeah. Radko Gudis. All right, he's yeah, a good he time, like man. He's a lot of fun. fun and, and there tough. are a million guys we could probably put into this situation. Yeah. But uh, I'm going with them. So we're yeah. going Neil Little, Goody, DZ. Then we got Loops, Uppy, and who was the other Ash. Loops? Sorry, and Ash. Yeah, Ash for the toughest. Because yeah. Uppy could get a little out of control. Yeah, Maybe we got to have Ash to help him out. Strong lineup. Uh, yeah, that's a great lineup. I'd love to do that. Let's go. Let's Friday. Go. Sign him up. <laughs> I'm going. Great right. question, though. Yeah. Adequate Duck over on Twitter. I want to know if there are any Flyers players or coaches who taught Derek something about equipment he didn't know before. Ooh. Man. Did Rock ever teach you anything? (laughs) (laughs) No. Uh, No, no, he didn't. He said coaches. He said coaches. (laughs) Oh, man. Wow. About equipment. French Um. Mike? No, we didn't really talk about equipment too no. much. French <laughs> Mike, you see that that phone? You don't see that phone? See that one. More, more concerned yeah, with the phone. Yeah, yeah. Uh, a coach that could have maybe taught me something about equipment. It's actually a pretty good question because yeah. I'm sure there's been a time where someone Gordo. said, "Oh, you think Gordo?" Some goalie equipment issues. <laughs> well, no, that that's a good point too. Like goalie coaches stuff. Oh man, that's a that's a good question. You got me stumped here. Um, Johnny had to have taught you something. Johnny, he's always got a full little. Man, I mean, no one really ever upgrades. said too much about it. You know, they never mm-hmm. said, "Oh, you should do this or you should do that." Or, "Hey, did you ever see this?" Um, probably be, would be a goalie coach. Yeah. Um, Probably has thrown something out there before about uh, pads or or maybe some extra protection or, or something like that. But I, I really can't put my finger on one single incident. I'd really have to think about that one. That's a good, that's a good question. A question. Um, yeah. Sorry I don't have a better answer. We got one more from Super Dino Mike over on Twitter. Dino. Riley, do you remember the moment you realized or a coach told you that you might have a chance of making it to the league? And what was that feeling like? That's a great question. I'm not sure. I'm not sure if there was an exact moment that I, that made me believe it. I think I've always believed it as long as I can remember. <clears throat> even way before I even started fighting, you just like you know, growing up you gotta, playing hockey. You gotta think that right? it's like that's your dream. Like you always believe that you're gonna make it. Um, and then when I wasn't drafted and I started fighting, like I, I never doubted myself. I never like you know didn't think it was going to happen but i don't remember like i don't remember a moment where it was just like oh yeah like now is now is the time that i'm going to believe in myself and i'm going to make it but um yeah but certainly along the way there's just you know just like as it evolves you just 
Johnny right Stevens really believed in you. And yeah. Homer did too. And well, Homer yeah, did for too. sure. And ha having coaches to believe in you helps you believe yeah. in yourself for sure, for sure. Um, but, you know, I wouldn't even been with Johnny um, and Homer and the Phantoms ha had I not battled my way out of the Central Hockey 100%. League. Which is, with that which, straight blade. Oh, well, yeah. Yeah. A lot of goals in that thing. But, uh, left? <laughs> I think it might be right. <laughs> no, I meant left in the stick. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 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 Left of the stick, yeah, right. Um, but yeah, I don't remember an exact moment that it, you know, kind of just dawned on me that oh, I have a chance. I think, uh, I mean, maybe it was around the time that I uh, you know, decided to take on the, the role of the enforcer that I think that that was my only shot, you know, really to give myself a standing chance. But great question. I yeah, really don't really think of an question. exact moment. But when you got called up or made the roster, who told you? Um, so it was interesting. Well. I had made the team at a training camp when Hitch was still here. They sent me down in training camp. And then I think Flyers got bullied around in one of these games, called back up like the next day, made the team on the opening day roster, go out west, scratch first three games, sent down, broke my ankle. Um, and I uh, was out pretty much half the year. But then it was uh, later in that season when I rehabbed my foot, came back, um, and... Uh, old Todd Fedora Friggy gets knocked out by Cole Tenor mm -hmm. and I was watching the game and I knew in that moment I was going to get called up so next next morning uh, show up at the skate zone early as, as I always did and Homer called me up and it was a pretty short meeting yeah calling you up do your thing Casey you kid all right gotcha yeah <laughs> I, uh, I remember when we were we were leaving New York uh, at the beginning of the season I think it was New York and I'm in the truck riding back with hairball and uh Homer called me and told me you're going to get sent down. And I was like, oh, uh, okay. And he's like, you know, he hangs up. Next morning he comes to my office, you know, <laughs> and he goes, you all right? And I'm like, yeah, why? He goes, oh, you took the news worse than Riley did when I <laughs> called you and told you he was going down. I said, oh, I didn't really want him to go down. He goes, well, I don't either, but he's going to go play and he'll be back. But then you broke your fucking ankle. But it was just funny because he was like, you okay? Yeah. <laughs> I guess I was upset. Yeah, it was disappointing. But, uh, yeah. It happens. But you made it back. Made it back. Made it back. Came yeah. back strong, baby. Came back strong, yeah. Good, Good questions, question, yeah, yeah. I think that's a wrap, Nass. That's a wrap. 134 in the books. Can Bo, you believe it? I can't. I can, can't believe it either. I really can't. No. Going strong. Going strong. All right. Until next week for 135s, be sure to check us out on social media, subscribe on YouTube, and until then, stay safe, knuckleheads.